sorry. I, over the last few weeks, I've been thinking about people around me, and sadly, over 2023, there's quite a few people have passed on and uh, you know been very close to me and uh, and been part of my circle. And uh, getting to this age now, we're losing and losing more of our friends. And uh, so I was reflecting a little bit. And over the last week, I started thinking about my friend Mark B. And um, the time that I, I spent with Mark. And over 20 years ago, I actually filmed Mark B at his place. And it was the time he recorded uh, the Mark B and Blade album. They had just finished recording it. The record had just come out. And um, I went and visited Mark and uh, spent some time with him. And I shot some footage, which um, originally, little extracts of that were used on a website that I started back at the end of the 90s called New Scratch. And uh, New Scratch was uh, a very primitive website, which myself, uh, a guy called Chris Melbourne, and uh, Steve Bridger were involved with. Chris Melbourne actually designed it, but it was the early days of the internet and um, and what it was, it was all HTML code and all the video footage that we were uploading was uh, flash video files, this is all pre-YouTube. But me and a good friend of mine called DJ Casualty from the group MSI, who had a real passion for like scratch DJing and stuff. And I had a passion for DJing, but I was very interested in uh, the, like, the big scheme, you know, the wider spectrum of hip hop from graffiti, breaking, digging and production and DJing and um, I got around Cash and he was so amazing at scratching I said look let's go around and start filming people and actually uh, creating a platform where we can actually uh, document the scene as it was actually it was a it was a big it was like a second wave a second wind of b-boying and a second wind of uh, DJing and I said look let's go around and me and Cash actually went around the country filming loads of people this is all pre-YouTube and, um, you know, Mark was somebody that I knew very well by that time. And he was one of those people that we featured. Now, I met Mark in the early 90s. And I met him through one person only, and that was through Damien from Same Beat Records. The shop opened in 93. And through Damien and uh, his network, I got to meet Mark B, Cy Specs, and Julian who were all friends of Damien's and Same Beat Steve's, the owner of the shop, because they were doing the Black Music Fest for a long time, from the late 80s um, all the way throughout to, to, to this day. And so Mark and uh, Cy Specs and Julian, they were real diggers, and uh, they would come to the store and uh, you know buy everything. This shop, Same Beat, um, which opened in 93, was what you see in what happened later in Sound Library and A1 Records. You know, this this shop existed in in Birmingham. It was four diggers for people who were looking for samples and and breaks and stuff. It's really specialised to cater for those type of people. And um, so you know, me and Mark, whenever we come to Birmingham, we would hang out. We'd go digging together. You know, we'd. Uh, go to some of the clubs and stuff because you know we had a good scene in them days you know we'll get together so sometimes I'd go to London I'd go visit him and uh, so I had this access I made this film with him in fact you know the, this footage I did this footage um, around the time around that 2000 time if I remember rightly he, he, he did uh, an album with Blade and so he was really excited about this record and uh, you know he didn't like doing interviews he didn't like to be on front of a camera he liked to be behind the camera and um, one time I went down there with my camera, I was hanging around, and uh, he, he let me film him. And, uh, you know, he just talked about how he made that record and how, you know, what the process was like and the experience working with Blade. And so he goes through all the samples and everything that he used to make that record. And, uh, yeah, it was uh, exciting. You know, it was really good for me to, to see him on the drum machine and pull out, you know, he's pulling out records from his collection, his personal collection, the stuff that he's into. And uh, one thing I'm, I can say about Mark is that everything that he had had to be mint condition. Me, I, my records are battered, you know, they've gone through the wars. And I don't care even if I'm searching for a record and I find that sample, that break, whatever it is, I don't care about the condition of the record, I just want to have it. Uh, Mark, everything had to be mint condition. As well, when he left London and he moved to Wales, I remember driving down to Wales to visit him and. Uh, I hated every part of that journey because I'm not used to driving in country lanes. 
and I went there by myself. In fact, uh, I skipped out of work at that time just to go see him and um, <clears throat> drove all the way down there. I, I remember going up this hill and it was just like the road was wide enough just for one car and it was just like a drop, bricking myself all the way going up to his house, wishing, hoping there was no, nothing coming in the opposite direction and there goes. All right, so yeah, I remember I drove over to his place and I drove to the top of this hill and there was nothing. It was this great big tree and uh, I sat around, I remember ringing him like, Mark, where the hell are you? And then he popped out from the side of this tree. <laughs> it looked like I said, where do you live now, Mark? And uh, drove up to the, where this tree was and then it was a little dip and there, there was his property, you know, and he was in a beautiful little place and he was super happy, you know, a new environment out of London. He, he was completely optimistic about the future. He was, he was, he was, he was just happy about life. You know, he got into fitness. He was all about weight training and everything. Go to his place, and I remember, blooming, went to the side of the house. There was blooming a uh, horse, <laughs> like in his garden, looking into his garden. You know, because he had the big fields all around him and everything. So he used to ring me up in the middle of the night and. Uh, be cussing out the owls, like, you know, that was funny. So we'd sit up and uh, we'd speak on vibe, video calls, doing a... <laughs> anyway, so, before we passed, we, for that year, we'd actually, he was living in Germany, and uh, so we would uh, do vibe video calls and just talk over the night, you know, he would play me actually, play me music that he was working on and um, American artists that he was working with and he was like, what do you think of these people and what do you think? And then um, I actually showed, I had done a rough version in 2015 of my, my film because I was going back to New York and uh, I was basically going to sit down with many of the artists and actually show them what I've done and uh, you know, see what their thoughts were. So I said, look, I, you know, I've just finished a rough to present. Uh, you want to watch it and he was the first person to watch it and uh, I gave him a link and everything and he, he did watch it and he got back to me just uh, like a day or two before I flew out and he was you know he was uh, really happy he got to see he was real proud of me what, I, what I'd done so yeah that was nice that was a, a pleasant call and then uh, sadly when I came back from New York then you know as soon as I came back I'd get messages that no one heard from him so uh, you know um, I've been sitting on this footage a long time. In fact, the, la the last record that Mark put out was on my, you know, was on my label. But uh, <clears throat> I s I've been sitting on this footage for a long time, and um, you know, hip hop's changing. And uh, you know, we came up in that that era where there were some rules and written rules and everything, which Mark stood by. And so, uh, you know, that you know, he had a he, he had a big influence on me. And, you know, I was living that world anyway, you know what I mean? It was do's and don'ts. And sometimes when you were across that line, you know, people would call you out. And um, anyway, so he's one of those great British producers that I feel like, uh, you know, there's very little, you know, no, there's no one out there really talking about these guys. Um, and I was reflecting, I thought, you know what, I might as well, I've been sitting on this footage, I might as well just put it out into the universe so that, you know, people could see. Uh, and, and, and learn a little bit more about Mark and see what he was like as a person and what, you know, what he was interested in. So uh, I decided to do this video and uh, put out this footage. Now, I hope you appreciate it. And uh, if you're friends of Mark or if you're new to the music or you want to find out about this guy, he was a, a really fantastic producer, a really fantastic person, uh, se super serious about what he did. And, uh, very dedicated to his music and uh, you know and lived and breathed it so uh, this is a uh, for you Mark keeping uh, his name alive Right now, in my studio, you know what I'm saying? 
for the end 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 We'll make all our tunes, everything right, you know. Basically, my background is I got into hip hop around '83, you know what I mean? Around the time when Smurf was out and you know, Nucleus, Jam and Revenge, no kind of tunes. The early electro days when electro came out. And I went with a very good break dancer, so I got into the graffiti element really. And from there, I moved on into DJing and uh, just stuck with that. And around 85, 86, when all my breaks and beats came out, I got really into that heavy, just trying to find the originals and the records, you know what I'm saying? And trying to discover where they come from, that kind of thing, you know? So then we around, well, I must have been 16 at the time, going to record players, you know what I mean? Getting up to the West End. Trying to find records like Bob James, Take to the Mardi Gras, and Nautilus, them kind of records, and just trying to dig as much as we can to find originals, you know what I'm saying? And at, time, at that time, people were sampling JB's, you know, uh, James Brown, that kind of thing, and their records even then were expensive, you know what I mean? They were like 25 pounds, and when you're 16, you can't really find money to get a record, you know what I'm saying? We don't come from a rich background or nothing, you know what I'm saying? And so we was just going into charity shops, you know, to find library records, easy listening records, and trying to develop our own shit, you know what I'm saying? So from then into like maybe like 92 is when I first got my first sampler. It was an Amiga computer, very shit package, you know what I'm saying? Went up to sort of call road and bought it for like 20 pounds, bunged in the computer, and from day one I chopped up beats, you know what I'm saying? I, I just listened to people like Marley Mar, said G Mantronic them kind of guys and just totally focus on how they were doing shit. I noticed things weren't loops, you know what I'm saying? And straight away we were basically just doing mad shit, you know what I mean? We had a lot of feedback from there. We give a lot of demos out to rappers and stuff. Um, we had a few mishaps in the studio and not working with professional people until like 1997 when I first went to the studio with Big Ted and MCM. I bought, bought a record out of Jazz Fudge, you know what I'm saying? Basically, from there, it went on and on, you know what I'm saying? We collected records after that, that was like 10 years later. So I had so many records, you know what I'm saying? We was going out to New York, around 95 million Julian, just taking out, you know, Hot Hits 2, Top of the Pops albums, versions of Dizzy, and just giving to people like Q-Tip, Buckwild, Lil Finesse. Um, just anybody who anybody was there, you know what I'm saying? And even then it was like kind of weird seeing them people record fans buying records, the records that you were looking for as well, you know what I mean? Drum breaks and stuff. And from there we went out to Jersey, we went out to Boston and all the areas in between just trying to get as many breaks, uh, trying to hook up with people, you know what I'm saying? Into the same vibe, the same element. And we hooked up with vinyl animators, I hooked up with DJ Riz and we used to give them a lot of English records and Riz was giving me like promos at the time and test pressing and instrumental albums and I used to come back here and give them, to, give them out to kids, you know what I'm saying, send them to kids and with that money, you see I bought this equipment, you know what I mean, invested it back into hip hop, you know what I mean, and just got better and better equipment every time I came back, you know what I mean. As you see here, I've got the SP1200 drum machine. I feel it's the backbone of hip hop right now, you know what I'm saying, or always has been. Uh, and there I sample drum breaks, you know what I'm saying? Chop them up. And here, and Sonic ASR 10. There ain't that many people out in England using this machine. But if you check American people, you've got Evidence, Alchemist, Joey Chavez, um, Rizza uses this, you know what I mean? So, I personally, after I see Vadim get an Akai, you know, an Atari set it wasn't for me, you know what I'm saying? The beats to me were sounding too. Uh, military kind of style, too rigid, you know what I'm saying? And with this style here, you know, me and Julian got the same equipment together and we knew it was working, you know what I mean? We knew it worked straight away because it was totally different to what everybody else was doing, you know what I mean? And you can see by the tune from the people I just mentioned, the tunes we're doing, it just stands out, you know what I mean? It ain't trying to follow the crowd, you know what I mean? But as you can see, I, I feel this is a basic setup, you know what I mean? It's like, I do everything here, all the pre production demos. And we record all the vocals here, you know what I mean? The Mark being played out, I'm just out now, the unknown. 
all the vocals were recorded in, you know what I'm saying? And when I tell people that, they're kind of amazed. It's like, how can you record vocals in your bedroom? You know what I'm saying? This is where I live, my bed's here, my wardrobe's here, clothes up here, you know what I mean? But we know how to get a good sound. As you see here, we've got a Joe Mick VC1 compressor, and we plug the mic into that, you know what I'm saying? And my advice is don't ever plug your mic into the desk because it creates noise. Go into that, and you can get compression through there, you can enhance it, you know what I'm saying? And it just, it just pumps it up, you know what I mean? So the mic we use is a Neumann U87, which is Blade. Unfortunately, it's not here today, so I can't show you it. But it's about two grand, and it does the job, you know what I'm saying? It makes everything clear, especially for Blade. His voice is so dynamic, and it's just like, it's the perfect mic for him, you know what I mean? So, that's that. And we record onto the Lettuce 8 that straight onto there. Everything goes into these tapes. So all my album is on these tapes, and as you see over there, behind the speaker, there's a whole bunch of them for our album, you know what I mean? And them tapes really are just high quality video tapes. They're about, you know, about ten pound each, and uh, it just sounds nice, man. You know what I'm saying? It's like even though the less is, is digital, I, f I feel with the tape quality there, it just it doesn't smother it so much. You know what I'm saying? And you get a nice balanced sound there. It doesn't sound too flat. It doesn't sound too crisp like CDs. You know what I mean? So <clears throat> from there, also after we lay down the vocals and stuff, uh, we get. DJs and if they need Mr. Thing, we had our um, UK DMC champion. We had Plus One, the ITF UK champion, and Prime Cuts, the world scratching champion of ITF, you know what I'm saying? So we done all the scratching here, you know what I'm saying? They've blessed these turntables. I feel very privileged that they've come around and mashed the fuck out my mixer, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so that's cool. Um, we lay all down the scratching onto the ADAT. I arrange everything here, then Blade will come back a few weeks later and I'll show him, you know, I've had a scratch in here, this here, this here, and 99.9% of the time he's happy with it, you know what I'm saying? He's never really commented about, oh, I don't like this, but I don't like that bit, you know what I'm saying? So, it's all very basic, really, you know what I mean? It's like, I remember like a month ago, Westwood came around here, and he's like, yeah, you got a nice setup, man, where'd you record your vocals? I'm like, here, yeah. and he's like, damn, you can't do your vocals in your bedroom. And I'm like, Tim, we do everything here, man, you know what I'm saying? And people are astonished because of the sound we get, you know what I mean? It's like, what I do normally is get the sound the best I can here. It doesn't take very long, I don't think, you know what I mean? And when I go to Julian, the creators, to mix my album, or any of my tracks, I take the DAT, we go with No Sleep Nigel, who's like the grandfather of engineering this hip-hop, you know what I'm saying? He's got perfect ears, sense, he knows all the tuning, he knows how to work every piece of equipment in the studio. And from there, I show him how I got it sounding, and I said, just get it sounding better. Just get the levels perfect. You know, he obviously knows how I want it, you know what I mean? So from there, we sit there for maybe 12, 13 hours and do what each tune, you know what I mean? It's very rarely that it drags out longer than that, you know what I'm saying? So the instrumental just ended, so I'll just flip it over, you know what I'm saying? What you hear right now is a new track that I've done with Tariq. It's called The Great Ones, which comes out at Source Records in November. Hopefully your video will be out by then. <laughs> if not, blame this man here. You know what I'm saying? So we had Al Tariq in here as well, you know what I'm saying? So that's cool. And the year before that, we had Missing Links up here. You know what I'm saying? So the record out of Missing Links now, Fat Beats. If you ain't got, got the Mark Bin Blade down, which is out now, get the Missing Links. You know what I'm saying? So what's it talking about? For me, I feel the backbone is the drums, you know what I'm saying? It's when I start making a beat, I'll start with a kick, a snare and a hi-hat. But I, what I try and do is not kind of separate it too much. I won't get a kick from one record and a snare from another record. I'll, I'll try and keep it the same, you know what I'm saying? All from the same record. So I'll sample that into here, which is the SP1200. And as you see, there's a nice kick there. You know what I'm saying? Nice snare. Unfortunately today, this is wired up so the beat is in there, it's this Dr. Dre remix I'm doing right now, so I can't really play that too much, you know what I'm saying, but that is the power of all my tracks I feel, you know what I mean? So around that drum break, we fit, I fit the music, you know what I'm saying, and I just keep working it until it sounds right and right and right, until I can sit here, I think basically the basic track will take 20, 30 minutes, you know what I mean, and if I'm bored of it after 15, 20 minutes, I won't even save it, I'll just scrap it, you know what I'm saying. So if you look at my record collection here, just this part here, this is, you know, this bit here is Library Records, you know what I'm saying? This is European 
and maybe a bunch of American records here. I don't really sample American records, you know what I'm saying? This is mainly European. This is drums, drums, drums. If you go under here, that's drums, and drums as well, you know what I'm saying? It's like, it's a habit, you know what I mean? And if you check me or Julian, you know what I mean? It's like, we're obsessed about drums, you know what I'm saying? It's like, if you find a new drum break, that's shit, you know what I'm saying? If I find something, I'll pass it to Julian, and vice versa, you know what I'm saying? It's like, if I find something really good, I won't share. Because I know he sells shit to evidence and everybody still, and I want my own shit, you know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. I don't want everybody sampling that shit, because I want my own distinct sound, man, you know what I'm saying? So basically, um, yeah. I dig, I dig with the sound burger, which is up here. When I go digging, I take this. You know what I mean? And obviously the pair of headphones, which goes in the back here, this is battery operated. So I can just take it where I want, man, you know what I mean? And also Simon from the Creators, he was what he was the first one to get one of these and put us all onto it, you know what I mean? And he he's said straight away, you can listen to what the fuck you want, you know what I mean? Uh -huh. Go into any shop. A lot of shops now though are kind of weird because they won't let you use it. Because uh -huh. they think you're going to scratch their records up and stuff. And I don't know. Some of these old guys in these record shops are arseholes, man. They don't even want to sell records to you, you know what I'm saying? I don't understand the logic in that, you know what I'm saying? It's a record shop, they don't even want to sell records. It's like you can't buy blind, you know what I mean? Uh -huh. And I don't really guess, you know what I mean? I don't guess ever, man. I've had too many guesses in the past, you know, which have been mistakes, you know what I'm saying? And if you went from my record collection, you'd see that the records I've got are probably expensive records now, you know what I mean? And my, my limitations to record is, you know, 20, 30 pounds. And it'd have to be fucking banging to get, for me to spend that much, you know what I'm saying? Because a lot of the records we had, like Axelrod, you know, Serge Gangsborg, Hangman's and that, they're old to us, you know what I mean? There ain't like no new things to us. Not to be egotistic, because we ain't like that. We're very modest people, you know what I mean? We've had them records for years, man, you know what I mean? It's like we come up to Birmingham where you live and we went to that shop beat with the old guys. Discovery. Yeah, we, we came up to Birmingham, you know, like five, six years ago and went to Discovery. And I asked the guy then if he got any David Axelrod albums and he pulled out three sealed copies. That was five years ago and nobody was onto it and he gave them to like ten of each. And even now they're forty quid each, you know what I mean? And we came out there, we was like, damn. And Julian went back there six months ago after after we visited there and he's like, You got any David Axelrod? And uh, the guy pulled out another one, you know what I mean? So that was definitely a shot we was hitting a long time ago. I remember the first time we went up there, me, Julian, and Johnny F from Liberty Grooves. That was for the NWA concert, and that was like, was that 89? It was in the... The Hummingbird. Yeah, the Hummingbird, you know what I mean? And we hit that shot back in 89, you know what I mean? And we was getting bongo band albums out there, all the Corner Gang albums, still copies, you know what I mean? And they were rare as fuck then, you know what I mean? But we was pulling them out for six, seven pounds, and the guy had you know, 10, 20 copies of each record. And he, he wasn't really clued up onto it so much, you know what I mean? Mm. So we just hit that shop. Then from there, we just hit over here up in Birmingham, Wolverhampton. Now we were into Manchester, Cornwall. We've been everywhere, you know what I'm saying? All the cities, Ipswich, Norwich. Mm -hmm. You know, we came all outside, all the outskirts of London M25 years ago, you know what I mean? And we still do, you know what I mean? So I think to get where we are now, we've worked hard at it, you know what I mean? It ain't like it's, it's been a free ride for us, you know what I mean? We've been out there, we've been finding these records and giving, giving certain copies out to certain people, you know what I mean, that we would give respect to, you know what I mean? And, you know, I don't really feel like if somebody hands you something, you don't appreciate it as much, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Everything that I've got in this world is I've got myself, you know what I mean? Every fucking record, every piece of equipment is from what I earned, you know what I'm saying? And I appreciate it more, you know what I mean? It ain't like it's a free ride, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So anyway, getting back to the record business, not to wander off too much, I apologise for that. It's like... Uh, what's I talking about? <coughs> so after we bled all the record shops dry in England, we were going out to Belgium, Holland, Germany. Me and Vaden drove to Poland a few years ago, went out to Warsaw, digging for records. Records there were like 10p each or something. We just got like this many guesses. And it cost us 20 quid for like 300 records or something, you know what I mean? And we found about 50 good records in there, we just chucked the others away when we got into the hotel, you know what I mean? But it's an experience, you know, it's a holiday, you know what I mean? So we went out into Europe, and even then, I remember I came back from Belgium like four years ago and I had placebo, I had two or three copies of them, I had Mark Moulin, them kind of records, you know what I'm saying? And even then I was going to the record dealers like, you want to buy some copies of these records? And they was like, placebo, what's that? And I was like, 
it's the shit, man, you know what I'm saying? I know even like two years ago, their records got reissued, you know what I mean? So I feel that we was, you know, two years ahead of them then, you know what I mean? It's like, so even now we go out to the record fairs and to Germany and Belgium all the time, you know what I mean? We went to Sweden last year, got some records out there, you know what I mean? It's like, we work hard this, man, you know what I'm saying? It's like a, it's like a, it's like a drug addict, us, drug addiction, I suppose, you know what I'm saying? It's like records are drugs to us, you know what I mean? We constantly want to find new records, man. And I want to stay one step ahead of Julian. And I know you want to say he's two steps ahead of me, you know what I'm saying? And the same with Simon, you know what I mean? It's like we've got to keep, keep at it. It's competition between three of us, you know what I'm saying? So you can find the best shit, you know what I mean? And even like them easy listing records like Harry Roach and Button Down Brass. I walked into a shop like five years ago in Mosey, you know what I mean? Which is near Hampton Court. And the guy had copies there from brand new. And he had like 20 copies, and he wouldn't even send them to me, man. He sold, he sold me like three copies. And I just thought these old guys in these record shops are cunts, you know what I'm saying? It's like they don't want to make money. And it's a strange mentality for these people, man, you know what I'm saying? They said, rather give you three copies and make no money than give you 20 copies. I don't understand the mentality in that, man, you know what I'm saying? It's like they're weird, they're weirdos, man. And it's like even if you go to record fairs now, you see these guys yapping about bullshit, man, when you're trying to find records. And it's like, so leave me alone, man, you know what I'm saying? And no, you can't use my sound burger, I'm sorry. You know what I mean? So, at the end of the day, we just looked for records, you know what I mean? Even before the word digging came about, we were just record collectors, you know what I'm saying? We wanted to find out about how these tracks were made, you know what I'm saying? So I think it's definitely one of the elements of hip hop if you want to add to the three or four elements, you know what I'm saying? My advice is to producers that are sampling is get out there and find some records, you know what I'm saying? But I would, I would personally say, don't try and find American records because every every producer in America has, has sampled them to death, you know what I'm saying? And I realised that, what, five, six years ago, you know what I'm saying? And that's why the sound I've got now stands out so much, I feel, you know what I'm saying? These ain't American records, you know what I mean? So, I, I basically went to the European thing, the English thing, you know what I mean? And, and went down that route, you know what I'm saying? And I'd advise people to go the same route, man, because this is, if you want to stand out, you've got to be distinct, you know what I mean? So, you know, you know, Pete Rock's Kano, Armour, Jamal, and, you know, like, Les McCann, all them records, they're just obvious records, and everybody's got them, you know what I mean? They sold, you know, 50,000 records in America, you know what I mean? You might take some English Easy Listening record, you know what I mean, that Lewis Parker's, you know, had hold of, and there might be some other shit on there, you know what I mean? They've only sold 500 copies in this country, because, you know, these ain't, it's, it ain't a big market for music in this country, like Easy Listening, and, and, you know, these European jazz records, and progressive rock records, and avant-garde records, you know what I'm saying? So, I'd say get out there, dig, dig as hard as you can, and and stick to what you're doing. And I was, my advice really is don't really listen to what your friends say. Just get it, try and get it wider than that, because your friends will tell you it's good regardless whether it's good or shit. You know what I'm saying? And that's what I think, that's the first thing I've done straight away was like not listen to my friends, man. Get out there and just work your butt off, man. You know what I'm saying? And I'd say if you look up here, there's two things that got me to where I'm going right now. It's perseverance and determination. And every morning I wake up and see that, you know what I'm saying? It's like, it gets me out of bed, man. Fuck it, get out of bed, turn the sample on, do your fucking shit, go and do your interviews, go and do your press, try and get your shit out into the radio, give out to the DJs, and, and get a goal, you know what I'm saying, to where you want to get to, you know what I mean? That was nearly the Mark Being Blade album cover. But we didn't decide it in the end, man. But it's a nice picture for the future, you know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? <laughs> now I can show you some classics, you know what I'm saying? I've got some nice classic 12 inches here, as you see. Catch a groove. Rarity, you know what I mean? I can't stop. Some nice shit for anybody who don't know that. You know what I mean? Chocolate jam. Nice band butter break there. Another band butter break there. Take a chance, Queen Samantha. Pample Moose. Give me what you got. Classic man, you know what I'm saying? Herman Kelly. You know what I mean? But as you see, I don't just collect this shit, man. This is American indie record from 95, you know what I mean? Bad as fuck, man. Look out for that shit. Ball Mason, easy to find, man. You know what I mean? No big deal there. Edwin Star, nice. Jazzy J break, was it? Nice thing there, you know what I mean? Or was it David D, man? David D. David D, man. No. 
And anybody who doesn't know this, look, common sense, not as in common sense, but common sense voice inside my head, which is a police cover, you know what I'm saying? But anybody who don't know this, you've got to check this shit out. This is the shit. Know what I mean? Look out for that one. I got that in Belgium a few months ago, you know what I mean? Found two copies out there, mate. Gave one to my mate. You know what I mean? You might recognise it from 45 King, you know what I mean? So, what else you got here? You can, you can edit all this, can't you? Yeah. yeah. Freedom, get up and dance. As you see, I'm a vinyl junkie, man. I want to find these classics, man. These are the classic classics. You know what I mean? The Missing Breakbeat album, 508, for anybody who hasn't got that shit. The Missing Breakbeat album, you know what I'm saying? No. Number 8. You know what I mean? This ain't the, the sole thing you got, but this has got some classics on it, man, as you can see. Midnight Theme, which is... Sorry, this one. Nice side, but still break. There you go, the missing breakbeat album. See it again, man. Two Pigs and the Hog, which is Bongo Band. Mexicans, Frisco Disco, flip, you know what I'm saying? Which is kind of disco, you know what I mean? Try and find that. <laughs> Bongo Band, easy to find, man. No big deal. Moogie and Dio. For anybody that knows the score, you know we found this record eight, ten years ago, you know what I'm saying? You know where that record came from. Computer Love, US copy. You know what I'm saying? Band Butter Break. Anybody knows the deal, knows this shit, you know what I'm saying? Nice Axel Rob production, mate, you know what I mean? I shouldn't do that really, man. Give away people's breaks, you know what I mean? Sorry Vic. <laughs> oh, <man>. Sorry Dre. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Man. Power of Zeus. If anybody knows that shit, you know what I'm saying? Got this out in Boston around 95, 96. What track is it? No, it's cool. I've had this shit for years, man. If you can find this in this country, you'd be lucky. Probably about 60 quid. You know what I'm saying? But going to America is quite easy to find, man. Some shit there. You know what I mean? Look out for this, man. This is a nice hidden secret, man. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean?
like to hear Lewis Parker rap over that, you know. But there's some other shit on this side, man. That... Extra piece on it. Big exotic. It's funny because they all sound for the same fucking records, man. They must, they must burn them as each other. You know what I mean? That's kind of funny. This will be wicked when it's edited. Yeah. <laughs> it's right. Might be getting the alchemist on it as well. Sweet as man. Could be better. Nice charcoal crest break. <laughs> Baby, that matter. And as you see, record and tape exchange, eight pounds. So I'm personally have to say, fuck you to record and tape exchange, you robbing bastards. <laughs> Sample that shit. Pete Rock, you know what I mean? Yeah. Larry Siffrey. Ain't no real issue. This is shit that we had a long time ago, man. You know what I'm saying? Long, long time ago, man. Yeah. Nice shit. Hard to find. Look out for that shit. Another trifle quest thing. And also the All Saints. <laughs> you know My obligation to rock for anybody in the know. You know we discovered this record again, mate. You know what I mean? I got this out in Belgium a few years ago. You know what I mean? About five years ago now. You know what I mean? You got it? Bad, mate. As you see now, if you want to look here. These are really just American records. Out of my whole record collection I've got here. European, you know what I'm saying? So you just want to check here, you know what I'm saying? Just, that's American, sorry man. Q65 is some shit we discovered. You know, look out for this Gamma Life woman. Bad. Oh, Headless Heroes, obviously American, you know what I mean? But just look out for this shit, man. It's mad shit, you know what I mean? Okay, you can stop it. Look out for this shit, Polish jazz man, you know what I'm saying? Real good shit mate, it's all good. I can't even pronounce dude's name here mate, you know what I mean? 3,000 points though, you know what I Simplicity works, you know what I'm saying? You see that? They sold a million records off that, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? So, ain't, ain't, it's not always as hard as you think, you know what I mean? Simplicity, man, you know what I mean? Don't try and fool anybody, man. It's cool, man, you know what I mean? It's like, you got loose shoes on, man, that's that. Yeah. Gorm McDermott, some shit. Well, Vic got this from Gorm McDermott himself, you know what I'm saying? And he gave it to my friend in Boston. This ain't no real shit, man, you know what I mean? I did shit for time, mate, you know what I mean? Original, mate. Five years ago. And you know we put people on that record a few years ago, you know what I mean? English shit, easy to get. Look out for that shit. For any young up and coming kids, this is one of the best musical albums of all time, man. The Hangar Man, you know what I mean? Also, in a different form, if I can show you. In color, color. I mean, but it's another one, I'll find it. In mm -hmm. good source. Original, you know what I mean? Nice trifle quest break. Nice well, early Heinz album, you know what I mean? Ambassador's album. You know what I'm saying? This shit. Try and find that, man. It's been a long time for that. Nice, nice album here. Look out for this, you know what I mean? 
Yes? Yes. Drum. Oh. I've heard on the Mr. Thing mixtape. My advice to people is sample originals. Don't sample bootlegs or reissue records, you know what I'm saying? I know people are sampling this record, but, but that is against the law for us, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> okay. Go. Look for this shit, man, you know what I'm saying? Bob Azam. This is the shit, man. This is actually a collectible Latin record, man, but this is one of the most collectible drum breaks. Fucking, if you can find this shit, man, this is the shit. It was actually Buck Wilder, how this what it was, you know what I mean? Original, original, that shit was five, six years, man, you know what I mean? Basically, this is the breaks from my album, you know what I'm saying? So, I put them all together just in case, you know what I mean? But, oh shit. I can do that again, because I'm basic. Okay. Basically, these are the breaks from my album. There's the samples, the scratches, everything, but I can't really show you these, but I'll play you some, you know what I mean? So, cut that there. Number one, from the world like <laughs> Break number three, back in the days. If you're looking for this, it's not English. You know what I mean? <laughs> As you can see, right, this is breaks, some new hip hop here, some a British hip hop selection is quite small, and this is just a hip hop, some breaks up there, you know what I mean? So we will dive now into as you want to see some rarities from hip hop, you know what I'm saying? These are records I got in Harlem. Went up to the Bronx, out in New Jersey, Boston, you know what I mean, out into Brooklyn, you know what I mean, friends and stuff. I risked my life a lot of these records out in Harlem, you know what I'm saying? Because I thought it was very dangerous, especially being white, you know what I'm saying? So we'll dive into that now. I'm trying to film this. Uh, get the name here. This is the Juno 106, very good for sub bass and kind of spacing noises I use on some of the tracks, you know what I'm saying? Angry like I'm playing keyboards or nothing like that, but it's just little bits involved, you know what I mean? 
this is the shit, mate. Bought it from Julian, you know what I'm saying, for 300 pounds. He's asked me ever since he wants it back. <laughs> <laughs> There's a few records here. Ray Khan instrumentals, Killer Priest instrumentals, Inspector Day instrumentals, Trick Croatian Bounce Rock, Old School Rarity Day, you know what I'm saying? Vicious Rap. You know I mean? It's the originals, man, you know what I'm saying? So, it's a start. Start on the bottom. Manual. You know what I mean? If you if you actually look at it, I'll find that. It's like a piss tape. It says if you can't use this machine, you'll come. Or something like that. This is an injunction to SP, so read that if you got a quick thing man. But, but read the last line where it says you know Can do. Ready? Yes. You know what I'm saying? So if you read that, I read that, and I didn't read the rest, you know what I'm saying? I'm learning straight away. So one day to use that machine, man. You know what I mean? Okay. As you see, this is all hip hop records. This is some albums here, you know what I mean? So, uh, this records here like Mob Deep, Tribe of Quest, you know what I'm saying? Old, this is kind of old school right here, so I started down at old school, you know what I'm saying? And do you keep them in all alph alphabetical order or? Yeah. I just know what they are. You saw that? Yeah. Trouble fun come here. Yeah. Very hard to find, man. Jam on Revenge, original, you know what I mean? Got it at home. Beastie Boys, first record. American, you know what I'm saying? Hard to find. Live at the fun house, right? Here we go. 12 inches. Never came out, just a promo. You know what I mean? It's beep pop, promo Z. Two copies, you know what I mean? I've added like five of these to be sold, you know what I mean? Fortunately, this is a reissue, but that's the original. Yeah, that's the reissue, man, you know what I'm saying? Got it from Mr. Bongo. Personally, when I heard old school, like, not even rappers to like, but you know, like the Electro records, when it came to around 1992, I wanted to go back out into Harlem to find these records, you know what I'm saying? And I got this many records, and there's another stack down there which we'll bring out in a second, but just to show you, it's proper old school. Old school is not rappers to like, it's Jiggy Hill Gang. There's a whole new, there's a, a whole other side of it, you know what I'm saying? Who's that again? Yeah, how much you pay in Harlem as well? Okay, yeah. For me, old school is not just rappers to like, and then kind of records. This is old school, you know what I'm saying? I went out to Harlem and risked my fucking life to get these records, you know what I'm saying? Got some guys I met out there, you know what I mean? Some at a record convention out in New York. Got up at four in the morning to get to the record fair before the Japanese and stuff, you know what I mean? So I went my butt off to get these. And they cost me, you know, anything between one dollar and ten dollars, you know what I'm saying? But we'll show you some titles here. This is old school. Come look at this one. Okay. Party People, Red Mac with Five. We just flick through it, yeah. This is just like a Dr. Jekyll and Hyde. 
for it. Should I put more in the right order? Yeah. So when you click through there, you can see the labels. Okay. So I did that. Okay. So now we'll show you the real old school. You know what I mean? Party People, Romantic 5. A lot of these records feature, you know, Jazzy, um, so Busy B and them kind of guys. This is the Jack and the Hybrid. You know what I mean? Orange Crush Action. This is very rare, man, you know what I'm saying? Try and find that, the Marvelous Free, you know what I'm saying? Not very good, but you know what I'm saying? Younger generation. Can't call it, that's easy to find. This is Busy B, you know what I'm saying? Try and find that, man. Rapper's Delight, a reggae version with a girl, you know what I'm saying? Okay, Grand Wizard Theodore on the Fantastic Five MCs. Try and find the shit, this is original. And if you see on the sticker here, so on wax, you know what I'm saying? Unfortunately, my friend tagged over it for some reason. You know what I'm saying? I believe Bust is there for doing it. But this is where, as you see, the picture comes from. Comes from this record here, you know what I mean? So we can put this together. You know what I mean? That's some shit. But as that you see, I'm a greedy motherfucker, and I have two copies of this record, man, you know what I'm saying? This one's a promo, you know what I'm saying? So, if you're looking for this shit, this is the original, man. Okay, Mike and Dave Records. Disco Dave and the Force 5 MCs, you know what I'm saying? Very rare, man, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I have two of them as well, you know what I mean? Zulu <laughs> Nation, originals, you know what I'm saying? These are not reissue records, man. Parts 1 and 2, you know what I mean? This is Bambara and that. Live Convention, this is not a reissue, you know what I'm saying? This is original, man, which I got out in Harlem, you know what I'm saying? Cost me 25 bucks. Busy B, school day. 81, you know what I'm saying? Jekyll and Hyde, you know what I'm saying? Actually, I want to play this for you, right? I want everybody to hear Jekyll and Hyde, you know what I'm saying? This is whack. <laughs> this is funny as fuck, man. This is fucking... This is Andre Harrell, a lot of people might know. He's CEO of... Uptown Records in the back in the day, you know what I'm saying? He's a major personality, you know what I'm saying? Hey everybody, the Corinthians are back! This is not a joke, this is his record, you know what I'm saying? Check the cover out the artwork, man. This is classic shit, man, you know what I mean? I guess you've heard enough of that, man. You know what I'm <laughs> but the other side is the shit, man. You know what I'm saying? Check out the other side. We got it. Grand Groove Brunch. Incredible, man. Some more shit here. Just four, very good. Razor to five. Curtis Blow. This is the shit, really. Doing the do. You know what I mean? A lot of people might not know this. I'll bang this on as well. Yeah? Okay, this is Curtis Blow. It's an old school break. A lot of people might diss Curtis Blow, but this is the shit, man. It's a good to your ear, have no fear, cause this blow is here. So a lot of people will know that from Feeling James and other kind of breakbeat records, you know what I mean? And that's where it comes from, Curtis Blow doing the do. Whoop. You know what I mean? What else we got? Okay. Flash it to the beat. This is the original. This is not no reissue, you know what I'm saying? This is the original Flash it to the beat. It's the same, that one's a bootleg. It's the same on the other side, you know, the, the James Brown give up a ton of loose thing, you know what I mean? It's the same thing, man, it's the original. Another Jekyll and Hyde production. Harlem World Queen, you know what I'm saying? Oh, I've got two copies of that, you know what I mean? <laughs> this is my shit, man, you know what I mean? Old school, man. I 
So you'd be able to just like flip it real quick. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be bad. Man. More old school here. Island World Crew, Jekyll and Hyde again. I'm saying, very good record, man. Try and find that. Love, love crew. This is Mr. Magic, man. He's rapping over Dance the Drummer's Beat, mate. Incredible record, man. You know what I'm saying? So take a look at that, man. Another copy of Trickeration. I know we saw a copy earlier. Cold Crush Brothers. Whoops. Cold Crush, Cold Crush Weekend. Confession Magnificent Trio. So, reggae label, whack rap. Incredible record, man. Very incredible record, man. Roller skate rap over Bounce Rock, Spider D. Oops, that's hard. Spider D, Big Apple rapping. Boogie Boys. Original man, not the real shit, you know what I mean? Original, and I've got two copies of that, you know what I mean? DJ Swan, I know a lot of people saw that on the DJ Shadow album cover, you know what I mean? Life on Planet Earth, Pee Wee Mel. Another Mr. Magic record, rapping with Mr. Magic. Original, not a real shit, man, you know what I'm saying? This is original. Oh, smoking Chiba Chiba, original, you know what I'm saying? Rare as fuck, man, it's the other side, it's a Monday. You know what I mean? Now we're getting to some shit, mate. Lessons one and two. Double D and Stansky. Lesson three on the other side. You know what I mean? Need luck, mate. Mo' case Play that beat. You know what I'm saying? Another Double D and Stansky record here. You know what I mean? That's crap. Okay. This is the, oh, I, I personally feel this is the best enjoy record, you know what I'm saying? Country rock rap. Disco 4. Very, very hard to find, man, you know what I'm saying? Just an average one there, you know what I mean? So, yeah. You can see these words, you can drill. Cool, then that's nice. These are no big deals for us, that's true for Really? Yeah. Come on. J. Rue originally, you know what I'm saying? Well, if you see something, tell me, man. So. Okay, I'll show you. Most of my records are test friends, it's kind of weird. Yeah. It's very rare, man. Fucking ages, man. That's the first BDP record. Not very good, but that's the first one, man. Yeah. 
sealed coffee mug. Yeah, and that one there you want to film around the remix. Here we go now. But this record does exist. Let me just tell you, it does exist, mate. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people wanted that record, mate. People beg me for that record, mate. I have people on their knees for that record, mate. Can't get to them. Ice cube. Mm -hmm. True to the game. These are, these are hard to find, man. These are Mac. I think we got about them. Tribal Chris Remix. Incredible, man. Yeah, that's fun. Follow my little remix, I know that pit one there. You get into the newer section there already. You know what I mean? Duck down records, man. This is the side. Head Zane ready. St. Clair, Green Vine. <laughs> I'm going to try to film these ones. Put one off the camera. I found Resurrection of Carboots for that No? <laughs> no way. Pound me. These records are the part, they should film me. What are the records are the Biggest Mob Deep fan, man. Mm -hmm. All the fucking records, man. It's all Mob Deep, man. You know what I'm saying? I'm the biggest Mob Deep fan, man. What that? On the dollar bill. That's the original version. Me too. Film that man. <coughs> Definitely want to show that on the camera. Man. Like the other side's whack. Fucking bad as fuck, man. It's like America, man. If you've seen anything here, just tell me. Right? Mm. Fucking loads of 
Big L, Devilson. Original. Oh, I had like 10 copies of it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, these are okay. Yeah, yeah. The thing's bugging me. Mark, can you? Yeah. Oh, it's cool. Is that the same record again? Yeah. Maybe. Oh. Yeah. Oh, right. Unfortunately, it's a real issue, man. <laughs> I'll pick one down now. I'm going to do shit. 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 World famous. Did you see my big beat nuts, fam? <laughs> beat nuts instrumental album. You know what I mean? I got from Juju, you know what I'm saying? Hellraiser. Mm. You know what I mean? Oh, two copies. I'm sorry, man. Oh, that should be both of them. Oh, I'm just right there. I feel weird, man. Wow, that's pretty good. Cool. Now we get to some rare records now, mate. Is it instrumentals? I'm gonna pull that out from there. Does anybody know what that record is? Forget what anybody says, this is the original, okay? That is the original version of that record. Film it one more time. You know what I mean? Ain't nobody got that. No? hate me now, man. It's alright, man. How many times have you been out to the US? Six, seven times. Mm. Yeah. The best tracks, you know what I mean? Really? <laughs> Let's take it through. Get in the West End, I think. US. Original US, you know what I mean? 
That's when Jive was trying to ban vinyl. It was promo only. They put out Fushnikins, BDP, and Chocolate Quest, and Test Press alone. I've got two of them now. Okay, here you go. Okay. For any of the doubters that said these records didn't exist and we were bullshitting, these are the instrumentals. You know what I'm saying? Okay, I will show you each one of these individually because nobody would believe us, okay? These are instrumental albums for Tribal Quest, which I swapped personally with Q-Tip for a drum break. He gave me all these records for one drum break. Okay, you see this? Instrumentals, show vinyl. You know what I'm saying? But these are one-sided. This wasn't an urban legend, man. These exist. You know what I'm saying? First album. There's a track here. This is a regular loop, you know what I'm saying? Didn't even make the album. Each man to can I kick it, man. You know what I mean? A few more there. This track didn't make the album vibe and stuff. You know what I mean? Another one there. You know what I mean? So you see it first hand now, these records do exist, you know what I'm saying? We don't bullshit, you know what I mean? Wow. Yeah. Original US, you know what I'm saying? Pro only. That came out at the same time when Jive was banning the records, you know what I mean? Exactly the same time. This is the Showbiz and AG instrumental album. It's in the bootleg. So we can put this on for me, you know what I mean? And all it says is Showtime, you know what I mean? I got this from Buck Wild. And as you see, these are instrumentals. As you can hear, this is actually on the second. Yeah, it's actually the second uh, show is an AG um, Law Finesta, but it's not the first that she went out for some reason. Yeah. I'm gonna spin this the other side now. It's the shit out. It's a bit deep purple. Okay, buck wild, a few jump breaks for that. <coughs> this is the album with the extra tracks that made it to the reissue, you know what I'm saying? This is the original album, man. As you see here, he say, she say, and more, one way out of together, you know what I'm saying? Test press and promo only, you know what I mean? I got that in Boston in the record fair. It's funny because I remember it was, it was me, my friend Hassan and Julian and the record fair, not Boston, sorry, New Jersey. And the uh, record fair was like two hours away and it was like six in the morning. I got up and Julian's like, I can't be bothered, man. I went there and got that many like test persons and promos for like two, three dollars each. And he came back and he was like, sure, man. And I was like, nah, mate. <laughs> so get up early, you know what I'm saying? You have to be there before everybody else, you know what I'm saying? Okay, Diamond Diam. You know what I mean? Original man, you know what I'm saying? This ain't no reissue business. These are originals. You gotta be one step ahead in this game, man. This is red as shit, man. That's more instrumental. Yeah. More instrumental albums. Pete Rock and Seal Smooth. You know what I mean? First album. Instrumental album, you know what I'm saying? And people, get up and go to your local car boot sale because I got this from the car boot sale about two years ago. This is the original, you know what I'm saying? This ain't no real issue. You can get hip hop breaks from anywhere, you know what I'm saying? So, you know what I mean? Like I told my man earlier, I went to the car boot sale the other day, I got Resurrection and just loads of shit, man, for a pound each, you know what I mean? Okay, 
So there we have the DEX album, then we have the instrumental album, you know what I'm saying? Exactly the same. So look out for the stamp. That was bootlegged and all, wasn't it? Yeah. Old Japan MC's album. Yeah, Original US promo. You know what I'm saying? I got that the first time I went to America, man. Is it loud? It's alright, you know what I mean? But it's better than a British copy, man. Artifacts instrumental album. Finish the test pressing. You know, just, to, just to prove, you know what I'm saying? Because I know there's doubters out there. You know what I'm saying? I actually got that for a friend. He he swapped it with T Ray for me, you know what I'm saying? I'm not, I'm not casual. Is it real? No. Casual um Switch? Yeah. That's effects first um original US, you know what I'm saying? Came out as a promo. Um I think that's the instrumental um. Here's one I missed, okay. Original. Deep cover. For the non-believers, you know what I'm saying? Ego tripping. It's yours. Well, it's gonna tell your mum said it is. I've got time, I've got time. On that, mate, let me ride. You know I'm saying? Big Dre fan, you know what I mean? Big, big Dre fan. <laughs> oh, he's laughing in the background. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Beat nuts. I went out to Denmark about three years ago when it came out because I know Juju, you know what I'm saying, and Mr. Sinister gave me these. Personally, battered up for Mr. Sinister, you know what I'm saying? So, I'll say thank you to him, man, you know what I mean? Test pressing is a re resurrection, you know what I mean? I got from DJ Riz. Mm. I'll put the Cypress on, you know what I mean? Mm. Have you seen that before? Which one? The test pressing and stuff. No, not the Cypress Hill one. Okay, Which album? First one. No, the uh, 12 inches. No, I don't know if you know about that. No, go on. Where are they? Um, Bad. You know what I'm saying? If you ain't seen it, it's because it's a remix. Real estate 12 inch. Oh, I've got two copies, man. Stone is the way to walk 12 inch. Oh, yeah. That's all shit, man. Pigs, you know what I mean? Pigs. Yep. <laughs> yeah. I'm a big Cypress Hill fan, man. Fucking muggy. Cool. Probably our shit in there, but. Come on. You want to see my collection of uh, some Mark Bruce shit?
Zabrosił. How much more different is the SP1200 to the 12? Uh, basically, with the 1200, right? You got a disc drive, you know what I mean? All right. So this takes normal floppy disk, but with a, with a 12, it's, it's a different color. There's no disc drive, so you've got to uh -huh. save onto like a tape, cassette, uh -huh. or onto a DAT or something, and it takes like 15 minutes to save a beat, which is kind of ridiculous, man. But it sounds crunchy. That one sounds crunchy, you know what I mean? Mm. So even if you find 12, man, go ahead and use it, you know what I mean? What I do, I'll say this is some of my records. Yeah, go ahead. Cool. I'll get on the other side of my... Yeah. <coughs> These are some of the records we put out recently and a few years ago, you know what I mean? Mark being Blade, we're out to reek. Mark being Blade, you know what I'm saying? MC Mello, another new one. It's a compilation I've done of library music on Music to Wolf, you know what I'm saying? It's just basically just shit. There's beats on there, breaks, club tracks, you know what I'm saying? I compiled that. It's an instrumental record I've done, you know what I'm saying, a few years ago. This stuff. First record I put out really, MCM and Big Ted, you know what I'm saying? It's the only copy I've got as well. Okay, Task Force, that's the instrumental album that we didn't put out. Wild Being Blade, Hitman for Hire. It's a drum break album I've done just to make some money, you know what I mean? The first K Bar record. That's what we put out last year. One of the records I'm most proud of, Task Force, me and my calling, you know what I'm saying? There's the Task Force up there, under Candlelock Bridge. My friend Mr. Fing in there, you know what I mean? Which brings us on to the new album, which is Mark Being Blade. It's unknown, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I cut the hair. It's in store now, people's Mark Being Blade, The Unknown, featuring Rodney P, Lewis Parker, Skinny Man, Chester P, Beryl Flow, Mr. Thing, Prime Cuts, and also Tim Westwood and Plus One, you know what I'm saying? So. Check that and check us on tour on tour right now all across England, you know what I'm saying? Thanks for your time and thanks for your support. Anybody who went out and bought any of my records, you know what I'm saying? Peace.